Hello and welcome. It is now time to deep dive into dun -da, dun -da, dun -da, drum and bass. And as usual, we will recreate these sounds using the Korg Volkas. Let's go. But first, let's go back in time to even before drum and bass existed and to the creation of breakbeat. Breakbeat was a concept already in the early 80s in the hip-hop culture. A break is basically a rhythmic part of a track. It could be a rock or funk or soul track, and like for example a drum solo in the middle of the song. And the breakbeat was when you took like that rhythmic break and looped it and played it lots of times. And then you could dance or rap to that breakbeat. They even developed a special dance to dance to different breaks which was called breakdance. And these loops a skilled DJ could do even before they had access to samplers. By using two turntables and two copies of the same record you could basically crossfade back and forth between the two records and each time rewind the record and replay the same loop over and over again. For example Grandmaster Flash, shown here in this clip from 1983, was an expert in this technique. But when samplers arrived in the mid and late 80s, looping was made much more easier. You can just import a break into your sample and loop it over and over again using loop function or by using a sequencer. And this was first picked up by the hardcore techno makers that added break beats in their hardcore techno tracks. And then inspired by hardcore techno and rave, artists like a guy called Gerald and The Prodigy developed a new sound that came to be called Big Beat, which we talked about in an earlier episode, where they also used high-pitched uh, breakbeats as uh, drums for the tracks. So Big Beat started in around 1991 and short after in 1992 a new style emerged with even higher tempo that was called Jungle or Drum and Bass. Uh, a bit complicated, I know, it's, it's pretty hard to separate these genres um, and there is actually quite a thin line between breakbeat, big beat and drum and bass and actually doesn't matter so much what genre it is as long as it's good music uh, but anyway, let me try and exemplify and show what the difference is between the three different genres so first, breakbeat is basically any looped break And then if you speed it up and add a 4 to the floor kick drum, some melodic loops and a bass line, then you get hardcore techno. Then if I remove the 4 to the floor kick drum but leave the bass line and the melodic loop, I get big beat. Then if I increase the tempo to around 160 beats per minute and I remove the melodic loop, then I have uh, drum and bass. Okay, but what is then the difference between jungle and drum and bass, you ask? Well, in my point of view, I would say jungle is a bit lighter. Uh, it includes more atmospheric sound and pads, and uh, it's more influenced by jazz, I would say. A perfect example of this, I would say, is early work by L.T.J. Bookham and the track uh, Damon's Theme from 1992. And an interesting fact is before this release, LTJ Bookham actually made big beats. So I think, for example, Logic Progressions uh, released in 1991 is, in my point of view, big beat. And then Damon's theme is uh, drum and bass. But it, it's a definite a thin line between big beat and drum and bass in, in the early 90s. Then drum and bass is a bit heavier, has even more focus on the drum and bass lines and also usually include some distortion on the bass line or even the drums. Uh, in my point of view, I think this sound was mainly shaped by Ram Records, founded in 1992 by Andy C and his friend Ant Miles. And here I think a really important track is uh, Sour Mash EP. <laughs> Uh, 
which was released in 1992 and and i really think you should listen to this ep it's great because uh, so somehow andy c here has one foot in big beat and one foot in drum and bass so constantly in this record i, I sometimes hear big beat and sometimes i hear drum and bass so definitely it's really, really important that shaped uh, the sound of ram records and, and their uh, future drum and bass to come uh, another important differentiator was that the big beat would emerge over time to move closer actually into rock and, and be more inspired by for example rock music uh, if you hear for example the later work of the prodigy they include more rock and metal inspired lyrics whilst drum and bass and jungle would take more of their inspiration from jazz soul and rap music and this also affected the choice of the tempo in drum and bass and jungle since the drum and bass djs usually toured together with uh, one or two mcs that would rap to the beats drum and bass producers also liked to include hip-hop samples and, and rap music samples in their music and if you want to sample and add uh, rap music and hip-hop uh, loops in your music and, and still have it as an up-tempo track you have basically two choices so let me show you here on the Volca sample uh, how this is done so hip-hop and rap music was usually recorded at around 90 to 95 beats per minute and for example I have here a short a cappella from Wu-Tang Forever a track called Cash Still Rules that was recorded in 90 beats per minute Big bolo stacking the shit finance the Volvo. Um, I'm not really sure who is rapping this, but it uh, sounds a lot uh, like Raekwon, I think. Uh, anyway, so 95 beats per minute is not really optimal tempo for the rave scene. And Big Beat, uh, that was usually produced in uh, like 120 to 140 beats per minute. They usually chose to increase the pitch of uh, rap and reggae samples, which gave this uh, chipmunk voice effect. So if I increase the tempo to 140, 40 beats per minute and then I will need to add also a drum beat so I will Big have to pitch up now this, uh, rap uh, vocal sample and then it sounds like this And that is like a typical big beat sound or hardcore techno sound However drum and bass they didn't like the, the chipmunk voice so let me take this back to the original pitch. Big bolo stacking the shit on the Volvo. So drum and bass instead had a different strategy to get the rap music a bit more up tempo, and that was actually to use double tempo. So then, if I take this drum sample and I add it uh, in double tempo, so I increase it, and then I play it together, and then it sounds like this. Big bolo stacking the shit on the Volvo. Big bolo and voila now we have transformed the rap music into a high tempo rave music so that was basically how it's done and now then to create our own drum and bass track uh, on the Korg Volkas. Uh, but to do that first we'll need some cool break beats to load into our Volkas sample. And why not go with some real classics? So one of the most sampled loops ever is uh, the instrumental track Amen Brother uh, released by The Winstons. So let's use that loop. And the second loop we will use is also a very famous breakbeat. And it is from the track Apache, made by Michael Weiners and his incredible bongo band. Which had the courtesy to have this excellent break in the middle of that track. So let's record these loops now and load them into our Volca sample. For this jam I will be using four Volcas, the Volca Sample, the Volca Modular, Volca FM and the Volca Bass. And to start now with the Volca Sample, I've now imported the two loops. So I have first here the Incredible Bongo Band. And here I have the Amen Break. And I have changed the pitch, uh, the Incredible Bongo Band to 16 and for the amen break to 8. Then I've also added just an extra kick drum, an extra snare drum or hand clap, which plays uh, just to emphasize some notes. And then I have also a very regular hi-hat here. 
also from the factory defaults of the Volker sample. And then when I add this all together, it sounds like this. And then I've also made some variations. Here I have, it sounds like this. So I've created a fill using this sample. But here, instead of starting from the beginning, I start from the snare drum, and that's why I can create this fill. The next pattern, I have made different rhythms, so I go like dunta dunta, so like this. And then it sounds like this. Just have a variation in the drum beat. And then I have just two drum rolls prepared here. And like so, I can play around and create the beats to my drum and bass track. Then I have also added a sub bass using the Volca modular. And what I've done is I've basically taken the triangle wave and connected it directly to the cutoff filter. More or less, it's a pure triangle wave with a filter on, and it sounds like this. So that's a really good bass for a drum and bass song, I think. Then I have some pads, so actually I'm doing more of a jungle track, I would say. <laughs> and I have added then a lot of effects on this. I will add a lot of reverb here from the NTS-1, and, and I have a reverb called Rice. And then the Volca bass will play this broken chord. And for the Volca FM, I have used a standard preset called Glass Pad, but I've changed the algorithm to algorithm 3 instead of algorithm 1, that is standard. And then I played just a melody that's like this. And I programmed that into the sequencer, and then it sounds like this. And I can add a Volca bass as well. And I think that gives a really nice jungle atmospheric type of chords. So now let's put it all together in our final jam. Let's go.
thanks a lot for watching this deep dive into drum and bass. I hope you enjoyed it. Also, do not forget to subscribe to this channel by clicking that subscribe button. And also a big thanks to you who is already a subscriber. You're awesome. And then the next deep dive episode, we will go back across the Atlantic Ocean to US once again. And we will deep dive into the second wave of Detroit Techno. That will be a great episode. So until next time, ta-da! Oh,